The exhaust gas of an engine is recirculated back into its combustion chamber to actually cool it. Also, it does not take part in the combustion reaction but still actually manages to reduce the emissions of NOx, that too significantly. So how does that work? Let's untangle in this video. EGR means exhaust gas recirculation. As the name suggests, the exhaust gas of an engine is recirculated back into its combustion chamber in some amount with fresh air or charge. It is used in both CI and modern SI engines to decrease the formation of NOx. Following are the added advantages of both in CIs and SIs. The mass of exhaust introduced in an engine depends upon the conditions of load, engine design, RPM, type of combustion, temperature, etc. And the maximum percentage of recirculation depends upon the type of ignition and fuel. Let's first see why we need EGR in CI engines. In an CI engine at intake stroke, all of the cylinder is filled up with fresh air. Then all of it is compressed. This compression increases the pressure and temperature inside. So when the fuel is injected, it auto ignites and starts burning. Now the oxygen in the air is utilized to complete the combustion. The burning of the fuel increases the temperature and pressure even more. So the piston gets pushed down to BDC and hence we get the power. All of this is okay for full load conditions because all of the oxygen inside gets used up for burning the fuel but the problem comes when the engine is at partial load condition. At partial loads, the power requirement is less. Hence, we inject less fuel which is obvious as there is no need to waste more of it. But this creates a problem. In cylinder, we have lot of oxygen which is sufficient to burn lot of fuel. But at partial load, as we inject less fuel, all of the oxygen inside is not utilized. So what happens? As the temperature inside the combustion chamber is really high and there is vacant oxygen atoms inside, these atoms react with the nitrogen in this environment and form nitrogen oxides NOx. It is a harmful pollutant and also should not be produced much as per the pollution norms. Obviously, we can't stop nitrogen entering the combustion chamber as 71% of the air consists of it. For this, at first glance, the solution may look simple. That is, to allow less amount of air having limited amount of oxygen to enter so that it is just sufficient to burn the fuel which we are going to inject. Which means at 50% of load, just fill the combustion chamber half with air. No excess supply means no excess vacant oxygen molecules. But this won't work either. If the combustion chamber is filled partially, then there would be less mass of air inside. So at compression, due to lack of mass, the pressure and temperature rise would be less. So when the fuel is injected, it cannot auto ignite as the pressure and temperature is not sufficient. Hence, engine won't work as there won't be any combustion. Here comes the EGR. Some of the exhaust gas from the earlier cycle is diverted. Then it is cooled to some extent. Now the temperature of the gas is relatively lower than the exhaust gas but is more than the atmospheric temperature. Now this exhaust gas is recirculated back to the inlet manifold via a EGR valve. According to the load condition, the opening of the EGR valve varies. Lower the load, more the exhaust enters, while as the load raises, more fresh air is allowed and exhaust recirculation is decreased. So what happens is, the combustion chamber fills completely with a mix of fresh air and recirculated exhaust. So when it gets compressed, the temperature rise and pressure rise is high. The exhaust recirculated also adds up to the temperature level. So when the fuel is injected now, it auto ignites quickly, decreasing the ignition lag and giving controlled combustion. After combustion, there is almost no oxygen left inside the cylinder as we have allowed only certain mass of fresh air to enter which was just sufficient enough to burn the exact quantity of fuel which we injected. While all of the other gas which was used to fill the combustion chamber was just the recirculated exhaust. As it is already burnt up gas, it does not have any vacant oxygen molecules and nor it can burn again. 
This recirculation of inert exhaust gas serves the purpose of increased mass required for compression, while we are still controlling the NOx formation by limiting the supply of oxygen atoms. Now how does it help to decrease the internal temperatures? Let's find out. But first, why do we need to decrease the internal temperature? The reason is to decrease the chance of knocking. And second, to decrease the chances of NOx formation if some amount of vacant oxygen atoms are still left. As the recirculated exhaust is inert, hence it does not take part in the combustion reaction. So as after combustion, combustion gases raise in temperature, but these recirculated exhausts don't. Now as they are at relatively lower temperature than the combustion gases, they absorb heat from them. This heat absorption by these recirculated gases result in decrease in internal temperature of the combustion chamber. Hence, we set it to be cooling the combustion chamber. This is for CI engines. For SI engines, the reason to recirculate it is to decrease the internal temperature and NOx formation. Its supply in SI engines is less compared to CIs as more mass introduction at inlet may lead to auto ignition which is not desired in SIs as it may lead to knocking. In SI engines, apart from cooling, there is one more advantage that is reduction in pumping losses. In SI engine, the flow of mass of air is restricted to restrict the oxygen supply, hence limiting the NOx production directly. This reduction in air flow also helps in decreasing the knocking tendency. But this restriction in air supply results in increase in pumping losses, as at suction, piston has to suck air from smaller opening. Opening here refers to the opening of throttle which is reduced to restrict the mass of air. With EGR, you can allow more mass of air to enter, decreasing the pumping losses while controlling the oxygen supply at same time. For both CIs and SIs, at partial load condition, the opening of EGR is inversely proportional to the load on engine. As the load increases, more fuel is needed to burn, so it requires more oxygen Hence, mass of exhaust recirculated is decreased and more fresh air is allowed. At heavy loads or at acceleration, the EGR valve is closed to ensure high mass of oxygen to burn more fuel and hence get more torque and power. Even at idle, the EGR valve is closed. This might be a bit confusing that why is EGR closed at no load condition idle? The reason is simple. Let's say you stop on a signal and the engine is idling and the EGR valve is in case open. Now, the RPM of the engine is obviously low to save the fuel. But what this also means is each cycle takes more time to complete. Now let's say it's green signal and now you put your foot down to accelerate. The EGR valve will close but the already sucked in air is just sufficient to burn less fuel. So you will have to wait for whole cycle to complete with less power. Even after that, in the next cycle, you will have to consume the exhaust mixed in the air which is present in the inlet manifold. So again, you might have to waste one more cycle. And after that, fresh air will come. As the engine is at lower RPM at idle, each cycle takes more time to complete. Hence, this will give a lag in acceleration which is not desired at all. Hence, EGR valve is closed at idle also. That's how EGR works and helps to decrease the NOx and engine temperature in CIs and SIs and also gives added advantage of decreasing pumping losses in SI engines while decreasing the ignition lag in CI engines. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit notification bell to get notified for future videos. Also make sure you hit the like button and share this video. If having any question or comments, feel free to mention them down in the comment section below. As of for now, I'm signing off and see you guys next week.